All right, welcome everybody to part two of our tier list little uh, ending to the Survivor Micronesia season. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're just joining us, you're just watching this video on our channel for the first time. Uh, I've been taking my friend here, Alec, through Survivor chronologically for the first time. And we just recently finished Survivor Micronesia. So he's seen the first 16 seasons. He doesn't know what's to come or what to expect. So the ranking for this evening will be uh, a ranking of 16. We yes, indeed. did a season ranking, and that was last week. Now we're doing the winner ranking. Um, so essentially how we're doing is we're setting up our tier list now. So we're going in-depth talking about each person and placing them on the tier list from S through F. And then in the future, after we finish the the seasons moving forward we'll just have one big video called ranking whatever survivor season where we'll just add in the latest winner add in the latest season but also rank the whole cast as well yes but uh yeah this is fun we already briefly talked about where we might uh place poverty but we'll play we'll lock it in more as we go in into it all right, so okay, we'll sounds do the good. Same. We'll go through chronologically like we did with the seasons. Okay. Which means uh, also he'll be flipping back and forth between two different tier lists. We each have our own tier lists uh, for the winners. So we'll each be ranking the winner at, at the same time. Right. Basically. Right. So first up is Richard Hatch. Richard Hatch. Um, <laughs> this has continued to be a hard one to rank because he, is, he yeah. really. The game was born from him. The people he was competing against were not really playing the game for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know, he was kind of designing the game as it's known today. It's tough, you know. He's like, he's like the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, survivor. yeah, kinda. Yeah, it is really hard to to know yeah. where to put him. Where to put you? Because when we're talking comparatively to these other players, where it's like, yeah, yeah, there's no real survivor if it weren't for him. But it's like these other. A lot of these other players are against a lot more competition, people that know the game a lot more, and there's a lot more elements to it. Um, mm. so it's tough. But if we look at Richard Hatch, he was a strategic force yeah. in the season. He was almost like the narrator, um, like the one strategic mind the whole season, pretty much. Like You don't hear almost anyone talk about like strategy. You know, you see alphabet strategy. That's just like an arbitrary <laughs> way of voting <laughs> without having to think too much about it. Right. And he he's part of the first alliance in Survivor yep. history, the, mm -hmm. the four. And then their tribe systematically takes out the other tribe. That's how Paganging is born. They just go one by one, take out the other tribe yep. uh, unceremoniously. Yep. Um <laughs> They had this crazy, newfangled idea to all vote for the same person. Yeah. When the which the merge and everybody was voting, literally everyone was voting a different way, just yeah. randomly, different people. And there's like these four votes on Gretchen, I believe it was. It was that was how they kicked it off. Right. And then. Yeah, that first merge was vote was the, everywhere. It was like, what the hell? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. You see Richard Hatch from the beginning. He's confident. Mm -hmm. He knows the assignment. He's like, I'm here for the, the million dollar check is already written. He says it himself. Yep. Uh, that being said, he does go down. He goes down to the final three with Rudy and Kelly. He throws the final challenge. He says, either of them have to take me. Uh, and then <laughs> he does win in a four to three vote. So it wasn't like yeah. he still barely got, got there. But, you know, the game was being born. So it's hard to be like to really criticize too much about it. Mm. You know, it's just some people were literally found it immoral to, to build alliances. So yeah, which is <laughs> just insane, so. which is insane to think about <laughs> at the beginning. Um, but where do you place him? I mean, I, it's hard to just immediately start off with an S, but I think, so I, th I think I'm going to just keep him at top of a for right now, personally. But he can easily move into S as we continue moving on here. This is interesting, yeah, because the whole time... I should pull that up, too. Yeah. Uh, 
our previous rankings to refer to. Mm-hmm. The whole time we had had, uh, I'm pretty sure we we kept Richard Hatchett number one the whole time because we could yeah. never really figure out what to do with him. From then on, it never felt right to put someone above him. Right. I think the game has uh, evolved, though. You know, that's it is tough to it's tough to say. Like, really, I don't know. It's it's it is hard. It's he's he's the weird because he's like the the Prometheus, you know, of of uh, of the whole game. So it's like, where do you yeah. where, how do you even how do you even quantify that? Yeah, I think I'll I'll do the same thing as you though. I'll put him at the top of A. Okay. Moving his X. But yeah, for reference, we both have him at number one previously. Yeah. So let's see. Uh next up we have Tina Wesson, the winner of Australian Outback. This one is uh it's one of those seasons where it's due for a rewatch for sure. So yeah. I feel like we don't get a full appreciation for her game because we weren't as tuned in because like hers is very low key yeah if you're just watching the show and the edit you you don't get much from her but really she's in a solid alliance from start to end she's in the dominant alliance um Mm -hmm. is pretty much never in danger of going and ultimately it's so good with colby at the end that he takes her to the end when he could have easily taken keith famey to the end and and won yeah so it's a solid game, but it's like just tough. It's yeah, I, I just stuck her in C for now. I, I think she's fine, a fine player, but nothing overly extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think a rewatch could benefit us there too, because yeah. especially if we're rewatching and we know she's the winner, we could right. pay, pay close attention to what she's doing. It might be able to pick up on on some things there, but mm-hmm. so how, how are you feeling? Yeah. I will put her in B for now. Okay. I could see that as well. Next up, we have Ethan Zahn, winner of Survivor Africa. One of the most universally liked Survivor players and Survivor mm-hmm. winners. Just yeah. A really nice guy. Mm-hmm. And has some very endearing moments, like we talked about before, with the village and playing soccer with the kids. Right. Hacky sack. Um, He's very like social. Like when people talk about a social player, they often point to someone like Ethan, mm-hmm. where he's like not a big strategizer. Got himself in a, in a decent alliance with uh, Big Tom and Lex, mm-hmm. but didn't do anything crazy to shake things up. Um, yeah, it's this is another one that's kind of tough. This is also due for a rewatch. Um, uh, I'm kind of in the same area as Tina. Here, um, it's kind of in the C, maybe, maybe B, but I'm I'm kind of in the C area, and I'm sort of like between, like I don't even know if I'd put him above her or not. I, it's I don't know, hard to say. I'm putting him. I put him in D, and we're talking about the best survivor winners, gameplay wise. I'm gonna put him in D because yeah. Um, he kind of had like even a. Even down to the end. Even down to the end, there was a couple things went his way. He got a couple lucky breaks in that that final immunity challenge. Um, uh, Kim, who he ultimately ends up going against and getting an easy win, she wins when if like either the other two, like Big Tom or Lex, if they won, it would probably be very different. Mm-hmm. Um, because Lex. Probably wins against Ethan, but uh, there's that whole thing where like they had to pay out Lex and Big Tom because uh, they had gotten the the question technically right for the final oh, right. challenge. Oh right, marked yeah. it wrong. Right. So there's like a little bit of ambiguity ambiguity there. Yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna bump him down to D. I think you're I think you're right. I mean, we we I think in the on the old list we've had him pretty low generally. Um, he's uh, out of 15 we had him at 12 yeah I think that's pretty fair yeah he um, seems like a a decent human being but as a as a survivor winner it's not the most exciting game we've ever seen yeah 
There's just not too much there. Yeah. They saw a guy. He's going to do good on most seasons. If you put him into a simulation, like, you're going to want to work with the guy. All right. Next up is Vesepia from Survivor Marquesis. All right. Vesepia was another low key player. Mm-hmm. But she was very intentional in how she was low key. Um, she knew when she needed to be in the background and not get herself in trouble, essentially. There were a lot of hot personalities that season. Um, so, yeah, playing playing it low key was uh, a smart decision. Um, I think I have her in C as well. Um, I think I'm going to put her above Tina. Okay, I'll put her in C. So I have one in, in each of A, B, C, and D right now. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, I remember the biggest thing is her, like, faith was very important to her. Mm. Even, like, her final tribal council as a big point she brought up. Um, I think I remember what I've heard, that the final tribal with her and Nalia was just, like, so horrible. They almost had to, like, retake it because it was just, like... <laughs> oh, my gosh. They were, yeah. It was, like, give, they were given nothing. It was, like, Oh, dear. That's horrible. Because well, because Nalia literally was like, I didn't start really playing the game until day thirty, yeah, two or whatever it was. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's <laughs> great, good job. <laughs> but I mean, Vesepia is very, she's she's at least very intentional with how she was playing. It wasn't an accident. Yeah. All right, now we're getting into the seasons. We did do full reactions for. If you want to check those out, we have a uh, playlist in the channel with all of them done every episode of all the seasons after this we did do reviews of the, all the seasons including the first four as well mm-hmm. so we got brian heideck winner of survivor thailand mr freeze mr he's, freeze he's, is a business he's, trip for he's, him. he's right up there he's a a a tier a. i think a tier above or below richard hatch i think just below richard hatch yeah, I think maybe Richard Hatch will just hold down the top of A tier. I don't he, know. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Right, where where are you putting him? I'll put him the same. Just yeah. below Richard Hatch. The thing is, uh it's hard to point to many flaws in his game. He's pretty much insulated the entire time. No one ever even thinks about putting him out. Yeah. He's in good with everybody so much that like they don't even know like how much of a, a sleaze bag he is. Like, yeah, I just think he's a great guy. He's I, doing hard work around camp. I love, I love how, uh, I love how they they get like a hint of kind of the sleaze bag he is. When I think, I think they start showing like the tapes from back home, and then it's like it's showing his wife and his and I don't know, just like the way he's like saying things about her and things, and people are like, oh. Oh no, he's. I don't know if I like him, but he wins anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, the uh, wife would just showed like their nice house with like nice cars. And oh, that stuff. was it. Yeah, it was like, like I didn't appreciate that. Yeah, just like, like yeah, showing off like, oh, here's all your our, all our cars, you know. And Clay was really hot on his wife, and it was, it yeah, was weird. It was weird. But, very, uh, weird. very weird. Ryan Heideck, who was the machine. In our yeah. season, he was yeah. He was just that android. Yeah, it was just like very much like. But the most the thing that most people look at and they have problems with with Brian Heideck is that he's actually might be a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> like the way he just like completely detaches, like he is one way with these people and completely detaches emotions from it. Yeah, uh, it's miraculous but then you see there's definitely flaws when it comes to the final tribal council he has some horrible answers it's clear he didn't even care to get to know like the other tribe at all because like, right. he couldn't answer questions about i think it was penny who asked her like uh where did i go to high school or where did i grow up or something and he says like forget what he says and then she's like no that was jan uh, and, then, <laughs> and then she's like am I the middle child the youngest child the only child he's like oh you're the middle child it's like no I'm the only child yeah he was like, he was like striking out every question it was right like, he just... it was a rough <laughs> yeah we were that close to having Clay Jordan win Survivor yeah. that's amazing <laughs> yeah I mean it's not good no one yeah. ever feels good about him as a winner because he's just like 
doesn't feel like a great person either. So. Right, but he dominated that game. But That's you. You have to. I mean, you have to give give credit where credits too. It was a cast that you know, boy, sure weren't a lot of winners in that cast, but uh, he was able to. Yeah, he was able to just control it pretty much the whole time. So it's like, yeah, he didn't get all the votes. Uh, it was a close vote, but he he was up next to the the exact person that he had to be to yep. get enough votes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a tier, yeah, yep. next to Richard Hatch. Next up, we have Jenna Maraska, winner of Survivor, at Amazon. Mm. Oh, there she is. Okay, uh, F. That's an F for me. <laughs> That's an F. <laughs> Sorry, it's just hard to. In terms of like, everybody deserves to win. For the most part, it's just like everybody deserves to win their season if they want. Obviously, you got to the end, you got the votes you need to win. But we're, for grading on a scale of worst to best winners, she's got to be towards the bottom. Yeah. Just like she wanted to quit at one point. She had almost no control in the game. It was mostly by virtue of Rob Sister Nino using her as a number. And she ended up there and just got a, a lucky streak of a couple challenge wins at the end when she needed to. She didn't win. His last couple of immunities, she would have been gone like when Butch was still there. Mm. Like, was, like final five. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And uh, she's got a lucky little streak there that that's how it went. Yep. But that is how it went. Not much not much to really praise ultimately, you know. It was likable enough to win over Matthew, but <laughs> Ultimately, it was literally like Rob Rob ran the whole season and she won the challenges when she needed to where she could just vote out the person who ran the whole season and then it's, you're left with these two people and she was the better of the two. Yeah, so. pretty much. So. Yeah. All right. And a well, little then. of a wet fart end yeah. of the season. It, it was. But, very unfortunate. But it is what it is. Right, next up, the winner, winner of Pearl Island, Sandra Diaz-Twine. Okay. We love Sandra. We do love Sandra. She was great. She was always looking out for herself. She did often find herself on the wrong side of things. She was with Rupert when he got voted out. Mm -hmm. She got blindsided by that. And uh, had this innate ability. She could get into feuds with with Johnny Fairplay. uh, And still stuck around with him. And still was able to have a working relationship for much of the game as well. Mm. I'm I'm think I'm leaning towards B. Mm-hmm. B tier. It's like B C somewhere in there. Somewhere in that range. Oh yeah, and I should say I didn't say all the other winners. Vesepia I uh previously had at number nine mm-hmm. out of fifteen. You had her at number ten. Brian, I had him at number four out of fifteen. You had him at number six, and then Sandra, I had at number eight out of fifteen. You had her at number nine. Okay. Top so, of, I was like, yeah, top, we'll, we'll put her top of C, bottom of B. I mean, B doesn't have anyone in at my list, so. I will put her at top of C personally. Okay, I have her at top of C as well. I think she she was solid in that she was self interested always. She was mm-hmm. always able to work with people mm-hmm. when she needed to. Um, despite getting in fights or whatever, she never burnt any bridges or she couldn't work with someone. She was always didn't matter who she would work with. She was like, I don't care as long as it's not me. I'll vote for whoever. But she ultimately didn't have that much control for much of the game. Yeah, um, it wasn't it wasn't clean or exciting. But there were remember there was a moment kind of near the end where she where she did de- definitely upend stuff in her favor, uh, which which was fun. But I don't yeah, remember the, I don't yeah, remember exactly what the moment was. It had something to do with tricking well, tricking the somebody. Women got together, took out Burton. Yeah, but. Uh, and then she was pretty well positioned from then on. Mm-hmm. She wasn't going anywhere. Next up is the winner of All Stars, Amber Burkich. Now Amber it's Mariano. Also, 
is also uh, also F, but she's above Jenna. Yeah, I would say as a player, she's at least a D or C for a winner. But as like a winning game, by virtue of winning only because Rob got her there and was hated more than her. Yeah. It makes it kind of hard to rate her much higher than that. Is mm. because like she didn't necessarily do anything wrong. There was other like yeah, not many flaws you can point to in her game, but yeah, not really. It was often much of her of Rob's uh, decision making, and then she was just there next to the right person in the end. <laughs> yep. So top of F tier for now. Next up. We got Chris Daugherty from Survivor Vanuatu. What a fun! It's a fun story for sure. Yeah, I think this is one of those ones that is just uh, in 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 my mind has only kind of been more increased over time in terms of like how how he did how he was able to pull this off. And I think I think I want to put him in a. Would I put it's him a or B for me. Yeah, it's like A or B. Well, if I'm I mean, guessing A or B, then it's is almost is almost flawless as end game. Yeah, like from when they make the flip on Lian on, like he he perfectly maneuvers that and goes where exactly where he needs to to where he's never in danger. Mm-hmm. And then has an awesome final tribal, does everything he needs to do there. I think yeah. I'm I think we put him in B, solid solid B for me. I think. I, I want to put him in an A. I'm okay. going to put him in A. Okay. He might end up being a very bottom of A. It might be a long A tier for me, but yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think he just did a really master class on that end game. The only thing that working against him is that he was kind of uh, at the women's. Uh, it was at the women's whim. Yeah. That he. Is that their grace that he even survived there, where he was like a sitting duck, right? And they just decided to happen to decide to turn on each other because he was the last one there, uh, and he just was able to survive from there, right? But what he did from there, it's like knew it really well, right? So I'll put him on the bottom of A for now, okay? That's fair. Tom Woman, winner of Survivor Palau. Uh, I think he's an A. Look, I think I'm gonna put him just look, below Ian, Richard Hatch. Ian. Ian. Yeah, Alec. Alec, it should have been an easy ass. I heard what you said. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have to let you go tonight. Uh, all right. All right. So no you're, put, feelings. you're putting him in S. He's an S. He's an S for me. I think, yeah, we had new one above Richard Hatch before, but Richard Hatch is an A tier now. So it's a new uh, game. You know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. He's really the, the he's just the. We've never seen a player as dominant in challenges as, as Tom. I mean, we kind of have. Challenges, but... but he's dominant. Period. He in yeah. the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's unprecedented in the sense that he only had to go to one tribal council emerge, and so greatly benefited by just being on the tribe as one so many times. Mm. Um, but then he he just positioned himself so well in his own tribe that he was able to. He was vulnerable. A couple times, and he still managed to get to the end. And uh, Ian literally laid his life down. Yeah, uh, on that on that pole. <laughs> he him. just he just did straight up. <laughs> Ian worked the pole for thirteen hours <laughs> straight, but got down for time. <laughs> yeah. so. He's a working man that night, but <laughs> yeah, very commendable. Yeah, I mean, you got you really can't you really got to respect respect the game. I mean, I think Palau is one of our like our lower rank seasons from memory, but like. Tom's game, get a respect game. I, I previously had Tom at number two. You had him at number five. Yeah, no, I, so I, I, had, him, I had him just below Richard before when I, but Richard was an anomaly. Yeah, I'm sort of torn. I think, I think, all right. I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do top of A, but we'll we'll keep him. We'll. We'll keep him there for now. Uh, that's where I'm going to stay uh, at. You have S. I heard what you said, Alec. Uh, I might maneuver it. <laughs> I, I might maneuver it. I heard what you said, Alec. They told me, <laughs> and uh, you promised me. I was. You actually just told me I was going to be an S, and now I'm hearing you. <laughs> an a, so. 
Uh, uh, I thought you were a man of your word. And, well, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, I'm say I'll just say I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. Okay. All right. All right. Next up is Danny Boatwright, the winner of Survivor Guatemala. Cool. Easy um, D tier. D tier. <laughs> I'll, I'll put her below Ethan. Yeah, that's where I have to. Here's the thing. She she's not only was under the radar she beat the radar and i'll just want that on the record i hate that i i hate that i absolutely <laughs> despise that statement That's what she says i know she said she didn't even want to let the producers know yeah. confessional she didn't want to give her a game because she didn't want it to leak right so it's like fair enough That's... but then we have to judge it from what we see yeah you know, i can't really imagine what i don't know much, that's the th- that's like the thing. It's like the blanks, but. right. You have to just you have to just go by what by what you see, and unfortunately, what you see is not all that interesting. <laughs> that's the problem. What I saw like, even if it's true, was on on the uh, on the minority alliance mm-hmm. in the merge, and she be able to scrap her way in. She made some good relationships with Stephanie and Rafe. Mm-hmm. Had a whole arrangement with Rafe, and then I saw Steph. What I see is Stephanie and Rafe completely fumbling when they voted out Lydia over Danny, when they could have voted her out and then beat Lydia in the final tribal or Easy. final immunity challenge and gone to the end together. Yeah. So uh, like she she wins only by virtue of them making that mistake in the end, mm-hmm. which is like can't hold it against her. But for looking comparing winners, um, unfortunately the ones that you don't know too much about her are going to tend to be in the bottom. Yeah. And it's in a situation like that. It's hard to put it too high. Right. I know there are some definite Danny truthers out there. <laughs> Danny defenders. Who, uh, well, Hey, good for them, higher, but good for them. But yeah, I just got to go by what, by what I saw in my gut. Um, it, it is fun though, that Stephanie becoming the villain of the season was, so it's definitely an interesting twist and turn. Yeah, she wins over Stephanie, which is like her story is maybe better, and people didn't have the greatest opinion of Stephanie at that point, and also probably didn't want to vote for someone who played before. So all these things yeah. kind of worked in her favor. Right. All right. Next up is the winner of Survivor Panama, Aris Buskowskis, Aris. Uh, That's another D tier yeah, winner. Yeah, it's another uh, D tier. <laughs> yeah, for me too. Um, I think I might ours, put oh, ours. This is one of the most boring winners to me, unfortunately, for, sure. for a season I love. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for definitely. I I almost have him under Danny, maybe. No, I'll have Aris above Danny, just a bit of only slightly. But yeah, he is very boring, boring, boring. We both co- had him at number eleven out of fifteen yeah. previously. Yeah, but we also had Danny at we had him at number eleven, Ethan at twelve, Danny at thirteen, Amber at fourteen, Jenna at fifteen. When I put so. Ethan, I, 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 Africa, Africa is so so vague. I'm actually gonna put Aris below Ethan because like my memory of Ethan is like, yeah, he's a nice guy, sure, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna put Aris above Ethan because at least okay. Aris, um, there's not too many glaring things working against him. He's just kind of boring, but he was in the alliance and uh, a more reasonable voice of the Kasaya alliance. And then he worked hand in hand with our queen Sari, mm. and they were tight. But and it also came down to the fact that she lost in the fire making challenge. So he didn't have to go against her, but he probably would have, like, on the end with her. And uh, he lucked out and had been constantly losing to Terry and just happens to win the right one. So they were able to get Terry out instead of him. That thing, uh, there's so many points where RS is in danger of mm. going. But there's also the old unprecedented like Terry having this idol and this whole thing about him that was like hard to get rid of him. So right. hard to hold that against him too much either. But we'll put him in top of D for now. Maybe it's okay. a little harsh, but yeah, comparatively. All right. Next up, we have Yul Kwan, winner of Survivor Cook Islands. Previously, you had it number two. I had number four. 
Yeah, so Yule's in an S tier for me. Um, I am going to move Tom also up into S tier again. Um, but I got Yule just above okay. him. Yeah, I mean, just I think... Above him, okay. Yule... Um, well, Yule, here's the thing about Yule. Yule had the the idle power play, basically. He, he, he had an advantage in the game that Tom didn't have, but he used that to, yeah. to dominating, a dominating advantage. Also, he's just one of the most likable people, at least on screen, that, that we that we saw. Uh, put, put Ethan at the top of the list, then. No, I'm saying in addition to playing a, in addition to playing a very dominant and and forward game. Um, yeah, that's I love Yule. Yeah, I love Yule. Um, I would also put Yule. I would also put Yule in S tier. I think. Yeah, it's but behind Tom, Tom because I have I always have to give it to Tom because he did do it with no trinkets. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll keep Tom. I'll I'll do the same thing actually because that's the that's the one knock really against. I would say against Yule is that he he was in a season where that idol was just ridiculously powerful. So yeah, it's like one of those things where you can't. There's nothing to really hold against Yule. Like yeah. it's not his fault that he had these right. things. But when you're trying to rank against other winners, yeah, he does have these things that are a little bit of lucky breaks where he's got like mm -hmm. all the shenanigans of Cook Islands. You know, like the yeah. message in a bottle, which arbitrarily sent the other tribe to to vote two people out. And then you had the, um, yeah, this idol, good up till final four. Um, and then there's a surprise as the final three. So it's actually just a free ticket. So they let them <laughs> know that, like, at the final four. Yeah. It's like, okay, he's there. He's there. <laughs> uh, so these are just little things, but. Little things that, yeah. I, I give him S tier in spite of that. Yeah. It's just those are the things that if there's someone who plays just as dominant of a game and does it without those things, then I'm going right. to give him the right. upper hand. It's, and I um, think that's fair. Tom definitely did that. Yeah, for sure. Next up, we have the winner of Survivor Fiji, Earl Cole. Earl Cole. All right. That's another great winner. This is a great stretch yeah. of winners. That's yeah, we just what. another great stretch. I think, oh boy, I well, I think he's an A for me, but uh, I don't. But where to put you? Previously, you had Earl at number six. I had him at number five. Okay. Overall, out of fifteen, Earl like might be an S tier. Also, I think we might I might be sleeping on Earl a little bit. So I'm gonna put Earl in A above Richard Hatch. Okay. So I'm gonna put him. So that's below. Is that below somebody else? So nope. No, so S my S tier is currently uh, Tom Yule, and then A is Earl, Richard Hatch, Brian Heideck, and then B is uh, Chris. So I'm between S and A for Earl, he played a super clean game mm. where he's never in danger of, of uh, except for one throwaway vote very early on. No one votes his name down the whole season. No one wants to get him out at any point. And... Um, the only thing that you can hold against him is that Yaman might have been in there and he might have he was seemingly okay with it, like the car deal mm -hmm. that would put Yaman there, and then it was just kinda like that deal did, fell through and then he was like, Well, I'll vote Yaman out now. But he seemingly was willing to go to the end with him. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, we don't see that play out, so we can't know for sure how it would have gone. Um, cause he said he had arguments ready for you, man. I would have been interested to hear that. Yeah, definitely. But he went to the end with Yaman constantly being the one people were going to shoot at first. So he was always positioned well and he was dominant the whole season. He was, in, he was part of everything. Yeah. Um, he was, I don't think he was left out of anything except for the time they tried to vote for you, man. And he played the idol. Right. So. It was a very clean game. I'm gonna also for sure. put him. Yeah. I'm gonna put him in S tier too. All right. F it. There. Where number, I'll put him at number three in S tier. All right. Behind the others. Next up is the winner of Survivor China, Todd Herzog. 
is another it's excellent just, winner. Yeah, I'm putting him top top S. Top of S. S. Yeah. Number one. Yeah, number one. I think Todd's uh, Todd's great. I mean, he's a great winner. Um, it's a fun game. Um, not a, not you know, there's a a lot of a lot of comedy along the way, but I, definitely one of the. He was a gamer from day one, and he he played the pieces perfectly. The whole every step of the way, I would say. Even he he had to overcome all the odds of all the foibles and all the problems that his alliances were were kind of getting him into, and he still overcame it to win. So mm -hmm. he was so well well positioned in early mm -hmm. early in the game. Everybody was giving them their clues. <laughs> yeah. Even from the other tribe, they would come over and give him the clues. Yeah, everyone would tell him all the information. A, um, a perfect blend of social and strategy, I think. I'd say the only knock against this game is that they, he was vocally identified as a threat, like pretty <laughs> repeatedly. Like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like repeatedly to, <laughs> with several shots to get at him, and it was just by virtue of like certain players not willing to make the move, like Denise, those kinds of players, mm. that he didn't get like taken out because just like but, yeah you know you can't hold that against him much either because it didn't they didn't take him out right but then he had a great final tribal council performance one of the best mm -hmm. and yeah he's great i put him in s tier also mm -hmm. um i put him uh number two behind tom okay i still have a problem Putting anyone above Tom, I don't know. <laughs> just Tom is Tom, Tom, is, Tom strong arming you, Zach. He's just he's but just... Tom has a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to put anyone above me, right? Like, I know you, it know. wouldn't be good for you. Hey, no, it wouldn't be good, good. <laughs> it wouldn't be good for you, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, it's, but at the same time, yeah, people identified Tom as a threat in a similar way, and yeah, just, in the same kind of way, they weren't. Willing to fully make the move, and also Tom so just very just destroyed in challenges. So you know, whatever, yeah. <laughs> no very chance. Comparable, but yeah, Todd, I don't think won any immunity challenges, or did he? Uh, not, at least not many that I remember. That wasn't many. I think there might have been one or two that he won towards the end, but I can't remember. Yeah. I think he might not have won any. He might not have. He might be, which is also pretty I mean, more more impressive, maybe. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a toss up between those two for me, but previously we both had him at number three mm. overall out of fifteen. So interesting. Now, lastly, we have our most recent winner, Parvati Shallow, a winner of Micronesia. Because he's a great winner too. Yeah, another great winner, honestly. And uh, I, I think I, if I was just talking up, I was talking up, uh, I was talking up Todd's game. I think. Uh, Parvati does that job just as well, honestly, in, in some ways. Maybe not the most exciting uh, outcome. You know, Suri would have been maybe maybe a little bit more hype. But everybody in that final yeah. four deserves to be there, and she deserves to win, for yeah. sure, for orchestrating the, 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 for sure. the Black Widow Brigade. So. She orchestrated that. was instrumental, and... Pretty much, she was heavily insulated from that. No one was ever targeting Parvati, mm. even within that alliance. And then, well, and, and everybody was trying to target her very early on in the game. And then, right, uh, but no one ever wanted to go after thing, her. Only thing to hold against her is that she was willing to go to the final three with Sari, and she might very well have lost against Sari in the final three if right. it was the normal final three like they expected. Right. So, that's true. That's the hardest thing to reconcile with is that it's like she's potentially playing a willingly losing game. Right. But but again, it's a lucky break, you know. Yeah. A lot of lucky breaks for for pretty much so, every winner that can have lucky breaks. So I think I'm gonna put her at. I think I'm gonna put her in S. Um. Uh, three. We'll see how I feel Number about that three. in a second. We'll see how I feel about that in a second. Now, we'll put her at four. 
We'll put her just behind Yule. Some four fantastic winners right there. I think that's where I have her. Um, okay. We'll see how I feel about that in a second. We'll, we'll reanalyze. But meanwhile, let's go over to yours. How are you feeling? I'll put her at the top of A. Okay. Which that's puts her at fifth overall for me right now. Totally fair. It's tough. So right now, my tier list is S tier is Tom, Todd, Yule, Earl. Yep. A tier, Parvati, Richard, Brian, Chris, B tier, Tina, mm -hmm. C tier, Sandra, Vesepia, D tier, Aris, Ethan, Danny, F tier, Amber, Jenna. How are we feeling about that? I think that's that sits right with me in my heart. Okay. Well, let's go back to mine. I have mm -hmm. Todd, Tom, Yule, Parvati. Er, uh, in S tier. And we have Earl, Richard Hatch, and Brian in A tier. Uh, Chris in B. Uh, Sandra, Vesepia, Tina in C. And then we have Ethan, Aris, Danny, Amber, Jenna. They're all in D. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. D is... Sorry, sorry, D. I, I, I forgot. We have them... I'm actually gonna move Aris because I like the bottom five, <laughs> the bottom five solidarity that we have. Aris, Aris, Aris Ethan, Ethan, Danny, Danny and Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty fair. I, I mean, like Aris is boring, um, but he did have some moments towards the end that make me laugh. And, and he's a white guy as fuck. He's white as fuck. <laughs> he's a straight white guy as fuck. He's so. a straight white guy as fuck. So I guess the athletic white guy gets negative points. So. Gets negative points, uh, but I guess we we have him beating out the Jew. So there we go. Uh, we have. <laughs> um, let's Jew, see. All right. Jew won't eat ham. <laughs> That's right. So That's, to knock you some points. So you have there. to knock you some points. Um, hmm. How does it sit with you in your heart? Because that's really where you're gonna have to make peace with at the end of the day. I was thinking about being spicy and bumping Chris up into A, and then bumping Sandra into B. That's so spicy. I think I'm good with this. I think I'm good with this. I think I'll stick with this for now. I think this is a good list. I mean, yeah. I mean, all my S tiers and A tiers are they're just excellent winners to me. Yeah, S's and A's. Winners and... For sure. I don't like Brian with his little smug face. And I know. He, uh, He's this freaking tank. There, his, but... little t his little tank top there. You... <laughs> 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 yeah. He just knew you would be there when he was taking that cast photo. He's like, yeah. I know I'm going to be sitting and minimum A tier <laughs> winners. <laughs> Years from now. All right. But hey, yeah, that's such a good go. stretch. Like, from yeah. 13 to 16 now, we've had such a great stretch of winners. Pretty amazing, yeah. That we've that all those all those winners all in one list like that, yeah. Was well, so it was kind of a bummer because we had a stretch there of like kind of not so great, you know, with RS and Danny kind of being in the low there. Well, there you have it. It's our winner rankings for the first 16 seasons, all right. But come back after every season. Uh, we'll, we'll first of all every season of Survivor as we go through, we do videos week to week going through every episode of the season. Then we do a full season review, and then we'll do a ranking that season where we put the cast in a tier list and then put the season, the winner in tier list in the tier list that we just made. Mm -hmm. So it'll be fun. See how our tier lists grow, change, and expand over time. There we go. So one last time. Oh. This here is my list. And we have Zach's list. Hey. Yeah. Very good. Yep, and uh, hopefully this is easier t on the eye uh, to keep track of our our rankings rather than a whole list of names. Mm -hmm. You're just listing off the names. <laughs> it gets uh, yeah. It feels right seeing it visually. Yeah. Next time we get new Survivor videos every week. Check out the playlist on our channel for all the Survivor videos. And uh, until next time, what video yeah. would you recommend our viewers watch next? 
Uh, well, you should go watch uh, our our review of Pirates of the Caribbean: Curse of Black Pearl. Yes, it's our new movie react. Well, let me scratch that. It's our old movie review series that we finished weeks ago. Yeah, it would have been point. finished. But you should go check out. <laughs> start start from the beginning yeah. and watch your way through. See see how we're we in the past. We're in the past. Yeah, but we should see. It's a weird time. See what uh, see what the fuss is all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other parts of the Caribbean review series. Tons of content on the channel. Aside from Survivor every week, we have movie reviews, game reviews, discussions, podcasts, games, and shenanigans all wrapped up in one channel. Mm-hmm. All right. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed. Like the video. Leave a comment letting us know your thoughts on our tier lists. What, uh, what does your tier list look like for these winners so far? And uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Cool stuff.